Oh, what's going on? I am finally back home in the States and something super excited today. But before we get to that, Rocket Espresso. Thank you, Rocket, for partnering with our team. That's my plug for Rocket. Hey, but seriously, um, exciting things coming with Rocket. We have... Uh, yeah, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but we got someone who uh, it partners with our team that is also planning on selling this bad boys here in the state. You can get them direct from him. And uh, part of it actually helps our team as well. So super cool. Piscucci coffee beans. Oh, Piscucci is probably the best espresso beans I've had. Hands down. Totally time. Anyways. Let's get to what I really want to talk about today. Today is a glorious day. Today is the day that we talk about the new team bike. It's beautiful. Let's look at the lines. Oh, it's built up a campy. I mean, it doesn't get more Italian than that. Oh, I'm sorry. Here you go. Take it out. So excited this is the willier zero slr it is a sick bike um this frame design is pretty cool so super quick the willier zero slr is their climbing bike they have two bikes they have uh the zero and then they have the Flante. The Flante frame is more of the aero bike, which I have as well. I just don't have it built up yet. But when I do get that built, I will share that with you. If you're like, which one is that? That is the frame that uh, Mark Cavendish is actually racing on. He just won a sprint the other day in the Giro, the last stage. So that is the frame that Cab is on. And then this bad boy is the frame of choice for the climbers on Astana. Uh, yeah, I am, dude, I am beyond stoked. This, the geometry on this is totally different than the Basso. Um, I liked the Basso. The Basso is a cool bike. I will say that the Basso probably was not the most race specific bike out there. Um, it was a good bike though. But dude, this thing, uh, I've been riding my Specialized the last couple of days. I'm going to ride this thing for the first time today. Just ripping on it up and down the driveway to make sure my fit was dialed. I was like, whew. This thing is, yeah, so far, just just 500 meters of riding. I'm like, hmm, game changer. Um, one thing about me though, fit-wise, I've been on a 54 size frame my whole life. That's what I've been riding. When I joined the team, they actually advised that I ju jump on 56, so I jumped on a 56. First, I was like, ah, oh, this might be a little bit too big. Actually, I came to found that the 56 is really good for me. Um, and then, so for the wheelier, I did order a large frame, which I believe the top tube measures about 55.7 centimeters, something like that. So it's basically a 56. And, uh, if I went as a medium, it would not have been good because look at, look at that seat post. It's pretty jacked out of this frame. So I have definitely been on too small of a bike my whole career. Um, you would think me being about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, I would be a 54, but apparently when you look at this guy, along with, you know, the cranks, and you put the cranks all the way to the bottom, I have really long legs. So the way this is set up, this gives me a nice knee angle of about 34, 35, which is kind of right in the sweet spot of where you want to be. Uh, yeah, anyway, that's where I'm at. Stem-wise, we're running a 110 because I'm on a bigger frame, just stick with the standard 110, no 120, reach is perfect. Uh, this, this stem is actually a negative six degree, that's what they come with. 
which uh, I'm actually okay with. It's, this front end is actually, I know it doesn't look like it, but it's 13 millimeters lower than the Basso, meaning, uh, what's that, 1.3 centimeters lower. So it actually ends up being right around the same. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Let me show you the internal cable routing on it. And then uh, just a couple other cool key features on it. Then let's go ride. So this frame is routed like this, internal cable routing. It's not the cleanest thing in the world, but it's pretty dang clean. Now, the reason why I have to use this spacer here for the internal routing is because I'm running my own bars with their stem. Now, had I decided to run the Willier fully integrated one piece bar and stem, that would have actually uh, eliminated that little spacer there and it would have been completely hidden cables and super, super, super clean. Um, but here's the problem, Wheeler, and honestly, it's not just Wheeler, it's, it's all manufacturers. They haven't fully catered their custom, their fully integrated bars and stems to the racer market. So for example, these bars, I believe are 37 up top and then, then they flare into a 42. But I like the narrow the narrowness up top. So if anything, I would love to run if I had to, and they were the same size bar, I'd re I'd run a 40, right? Now the problem with with Willier, and again, like Basso was like this too, and a lot of other companies is when they make the fully integrated bar and stem all one piece, they offer a 110 stem on that, with the bar being a 42. It's a bit too wide for me. Um, from there, they get bigger. If you're to run like a, I think the 120 is still a 42. If you run a 130, then you move into a 43 or a 44. Uh, if you run a 90, then you get the 40 mil bar. So for me, it just wasn't an option. So I ran the 110 stem, ran my own bar, had that funky little spacer there, but it makes it clean. And honestly, the front end looks relatively clean. So, uh, I mean, you can really not tell that there's, there's cables that have been hidden so that's kind of cool. And actually that spacer, I mean, you go with the Willier stem and you're gonna have a nice clean flush mount and it's gonna look good. So I dig that. Something else on this bike that's really cool uh, that I think will be a game changer for races if you ever need to change flat or anything like that. They come with the Mavic, I don't want to say quick release, but the Mavic through axle skewers. Now, let me talk a little bit about this. Can't fully see it, but this is not your typical uh, through axle. This is actually a dropout, like a traditional quick release. And then on the other side, it does actually screw into the frame. So that side is, the other side is threaded. This side is a dropout. And the way these skewers are designed is it fits into the slot like a dropout. And once you get it in there, you tap it and it, sh it shoots through and it locks and then you can tighten it really quick. So for changing on the fly, this is actually nice because now you're not fully removing the skewer. You just have a pair of these on your spare wheel in the car. You untie or unscrew it, slap the other ones on, pop, pop, sh sh done. You're not having to remove a full skewer and then pull a whole nother skewer in. So it's kind of a cool thing actually. Um, Mavic skewers, it's growing on me. But again, the frame has to be designed for them and Willier has done that. So those are just two kind of quick things I've noticed about the bike. Um, the one thing I like, the Basso had a weird adjustment back here. It was very ugly and the seat post was caved in and gross. This is very clean aesthetically. Uh, now it's just in here, boom, boom. I know. It's a little thing, but it's the little things that I love. So I like the, I actually like how they designed the, the seat post clamp. So also Basso had old school, I don't know what they had on there, it was weird. It's an old school way of putting your saddle on you just from the back and then the front through the hole. But if you don't have a hole, then you're kind of screwed on adjusting that. Um, but Wheelier is more traditional and it just works flawlessly. Love that. 
anyways, it's built up with uh, my Campy EPS. So we got 12 speed Campy on here. And outside of that, let's go ride it. Get our first stop. Okay, time for some real talk. Uh, first impressions. She's a little twitchy in the front end. And I will say that is due to, I think internal cable routing. You know, you don't have any hang them in outside, kind of keeping the bike more steady. Um, it's not a bad thing, just getting used to it. Second thing is this bike is so, responsive in a good way compared to my Basso. If there's a bike I was to compare it to, I compare it to my SL6 Tarmac. Except I think it's a little better. Uh, yeah, it's lively. Like if I wanna go left, boom, it goes. If I like start to push a little power, it shoots forward. Uh, the Basso was a very big stiff tank it didn't really if you're going straight and you got in a rhythm it would hum along this thing though has uh, agility it will change directions on a dime the other thing is going uphill it definitely carries more speed and momentum while going uphill climbs well Bossa did not climb well at all going downhill this thing rips I'm like oh my gosh uh and it's so so stable in the corners like you pick your line and you know you're going too fast but you pick it and it just holds no questions definitely first impressions i'm liking it so far something else uh, about the bike that's totally different it's light so to give you an example, uh, it's built up with my training wheels on right now. <laughs> training wheels, not like, you know, for balancing. Anyways, 16.3 uh, ounces, I think is what it weighs. And when I throw on my race wheels, believe it or not, my race wheels are about a half pound lighter. I throw those on. Now we're in the 15s. That's huge considering my Basso is like 17 pounds, maybe a little more. Uh, my x -Force Tarmac rim brake is like 15.1. So for this being disc and a size up with race wheels, it's like, just over a half pound heavier than my S-Works. It's so nice, actually. I really dig that. Back from the ride. All right. Final thoughts. Wrap this up. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was on... Uh, no, I think I talked about the downhills, actually. Man, I was taking some corners and... It's, uh, it's definitely, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Like it holds its line. So, and I think this is kind of mind blowing for me just because, uh, on the boss, the boss had really short rear chain stays and the front end was longer. So it was almost like, it was a little bit harder to keep your weight over the center of the bike because the front end was like so much longer and further out there. So with the wheelier, the rear chain stays are kind of like the traditional typical length they're a little bit longer and then the front end isn't as long as the basso was so i just feel like overall my center of gravity and my weight is like directly over the middle of like the bottom bracket over the frame maybe that's why when i felt like i was taking corners it just felt stable and sturdy 
Um, you know, I didn't have to like worry about kind of like shifting my weight forward or backwards like I did on the basso. This one, I could just kind of like pick the line, like drop my chest to the bars and then just lean the bike over and the thing would just shoot and take off. Um, just super stable. So outside of that though, that's just kind of my, my first impressions about the bike. Um, it was super fun. I got a, about an 82 mile ride in on it. Um, almost 7,000 feet of climbing. Here is uh, the ride right here if you wanna go check it out. But man, outside of that, I'm digging it so far. Um, made one or two adjustments on the fly on the road, like uh, because I didn't get my headset super tight, so like tighten on the road, not a big deal. And then uh, just adjust the tilt of the seat a little bit. Um, I did my bellow fit to get my fit dialed on it before I even took it out. So everything was perfect and where it needed to be. Felt super comfortable on it. Yeah, that's it. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this. Keep riding and training hard. And uh, I will drop another video down the road going more in depth about my overall feelings about this bike. So, take care of it.